in this program we're going to create and save an xml document which contains the user information and we will write a program which takes the user id as an input and return the user details by taking the user information from the xml document xml stands for extensible markup language it is a text-based markup language derived from standard generalized markup language xml tags identify the data and are used to store and organize the data rather than specifying how to display it like html tags which are used to display the data xml is not going to replace the html in near future but it introduces new possibility by adopting many successful features of html there are three important characteristics of xml first the xml is extensible xml allows you to create your own self descriptive tags or language that suits your application Second, XML carries the data, does not present it. XML allows you to store the data irrespective of how it will be presented. And the third one is, XML is public standard. XML was developed by W3 Consortium and it is available as open standard. XML can work behind the scenes to simplify the creation of HTML documents for large websites. XML can be used to exchange the information between the organization and systems. XML can be used for offloading and reloading the databases. XML can be used to store and arrange the data which can customize your data handling needs. XML can be easily merged with style sheets to create almost any desired output. Virtually any type of data can be expressed as an XML document. XML is a markup language that defines set of rules for encoding documents in a format that is both human readable and machine readable. So what is exactly the markup language? Markup language is a system of formatting and arranging the elements in a document using tags. Now let's see the program. Here we're going to read the XML file and print the details by using JavaScript. To read and print the details of XML file using JavaScript, we need to create an XML file with data we want to print. Creating XML file is very simple because it uses custom tags. After creating the XML file, we will write JavaScript to read and extract the data from the XML file. So we will send the XML HTTP request to the server and fetch the details from the XML file by using JavaScript. If the request is finished, then the response is ready. And the status is OK. So we will get the XML data by use of tag name. Now we will create two files userlist.xml and index.html. Userlist.xml will store all the user details. To create XML file, we will use the custom tags like username, address, phone, which stores the details of every user according to the tag name. In index.html, we have a form to get the user input to display user details. And JavaScript code to read the XML file where the user details are stored. Here we created a button and on click equal should read the function read xml data. If you click it, it will read the content for the entire input and displays the content. Now create a script area and close it. Inside the script area, var is used to declare the variables. This line of code is variable declaration. The xml document object is the root of an xml document tree and gives us the primary access to the document's data. The read xml data function creates a new xml http request object. To send a http request, create a xml http request object. Open a URL and send a request. xml http request is an API in form of object whose methods transfers data between the web browser and web server. And the object is provided by the browser's JavaScript environment. We must initialize the xml http request object through open method. This method takes five parameters, however we used three parameters. First parameter of this method is text string indicating the HTTP request methods like get, post, head, put, delete and options. The second parameter of this method is text string indicating the URL of HTTP request. The third parameter is a boolean value indicating whether a request will be asynchronous or asynchronous request. Fourth and fifth parameter are username and password respectively. The open method specifies the type of the request. The third parameter true means it is asynchronous and if it is false it is a synchronous request. Server request should be sent asynchronously but here we use a synchronous request. To execute a synchronous request change the third parameter in open method to false. Sometimes asynchronous equals false are used for quick testing. Since this code will wait for the server completion and there is no need for an on ready state change function. To send a request to server, we use open and send methods of XML HTTP request object. Send method will send a request to server. Call this method to send a HTTP request and this method accepts only one parameter and it is an optional parameter which lets you to specify the request body. 
This is primarily used for requests such as put. If the request method is get or head, the body parameter is ignored and the request body is set to null. Response XML is a read-only property that returns the document containing HTML or XML retrieved by the request. It works for both HTML and XML. Get elements by tag name method returns a collection of all elements with a specified tag name. And this property is read only. And this parameter is a tag name of the elements. So these lines of code will return a collection of child elements with a given tag name. This line of code will loop through the specified column. First child property of node interface returns the node's first child entry. First child is an element node, a text node, or a comment node. And the node value here will return the string containing the value of this current node. This method will return the element that has the id attribute with a specified value. And it will check for the element whose id property matches the specified string that is the user input since elements ids are unique. So this line of code will return the html content of this element. This line of code returns the value of the value attribute of a text field. Inner html is a property of an element that allow you to get or set the HTML markup content within an element. This line will set the inner HTML property and the property value is text, so it will return the HTML content of the elements. First child property returns the node object and the node value property returns the value of a node. So these lines of code will get the node name and the value. So first it will select the elements by its ID using the get elements by ID method. Then get the HTML content of an element using the inner HTML property. Now let's execute the program. Go to NetBeans, create a new project, select Java web, web application, click next, next, next and finish. In index.html we get the user input and display the user details. And we have a JavaScript code to read the XML file where the user details are stored. Now copy paste the code for index.html. Now create a XML file and name the XML file as user list. Copy paste the code for userlist.xml. This is the XML file where we store all the user details. Save the project and run index.html file. And here comes the output. Enter the user ID and click the button. And here we get the user details for the corresponding user ID.